part four of the CNC plasma table build. Yeah, it's working good. How about an overview of what's built into it? Well, the air is dried and regulated locally. Got that mounted to the table. The plasma cutter I went with was the Hynade Cut 60DN. It's a low frequency plasma cutter with on off control, arc voltage monitoring, and on off feedback. No discount on this thing, I paid for it all by myself. I like it so far, and it can run off of 110, 220 volt. Alright, around the side I've got the Z axis sensors, Z axis motor wiring, also the X axis sensors and motor wiring coming in this side. I've used what most people call the aircraft connectors. Actually, I'm not really a fan of these, but they're readily available and pretty easy to solder. And up on top, uh, yeah, I think you're checking out the red pole, aren't you? Well, that's my take on the cable strain relief for the Z-axis and plasma torch wiring. It's fiberglass, it's tough, and it's pretty. Oh, where did you get it? Is that what you're asking? Well, actually, it's just a flagpole for uh, riding in the dunes. Easy to find at a lot of off-road motorcycle stores. This is the bigger variety, half inch or so. I 3D printed the connection points and the end point, and they have a wire grabs built into them. Works great. Uh, look, I'll touch it. Boing, boing. Oh yeah, that's nice. Now down to the other side of the cabinet. Power is fed in here with a 120 volt wall plug. I stole that from my wife's Cricut, uh, cry cut, I don't know what you call it, desk paperweight. The 120 AC is fused at the switch and below that is circuit breakers for the 24 volt DC loops. Above that we got a green, it's a got power light. I got a red, that's a we got some problem light. And an e-stop which is actually just a hold button. I'll use the power kill on the bottom if I need a real e-stop. The e-stop button here, we'll just put it into hold so that I can fix whatever the problem is and hopefully continue on cutting. And above that is the Y-axis probe and motor wiring. Also the plasma cutter on-off signal. Alright, let's power this baby up. Yeah, green means go. Alright, let's check under the hood. Pretty basic. We've got a 24 volt power supply. The Y, X, and Z motor drivers. The controller system. And that little yellow box is a Wi-Fi router. I'll explain more about that a little later. That's pretty much it. Oh yeah, I have a card reader mounted on the outside if I want to drop my cut files in there that way. All right, well how about some more details? Well, to some people, I think this will be useful. One thing I hadn't been able to see is how other people are running their slats. Actually, I didn't look that hard. I just made up my own system. Who knows, maybe it's exactly the same as what everyone else is doing. So I got a hold of some one inch by half inch square tubing and a stick of quarter inch rod. I drilled through the tubing and cut lengths of rod to go into the holes. I welded the rod on top, actually only on the sides. You'll see that in the video in a second so that the slats don't get hung up on them or change its uh, vertical position. Then I welded out the bottom like a rosette and ground it smooth. Voila, donezo, works pretty good. Then I tossed them in the water pan, laced the slats through them. Super simple, super easy to change out slats, and it's very sturdy. Oh man, don't look at that uh, welded in bung. It's a great example of my poor TIG welding. For the slats, I'm just running 8th inch by 2 inch bar stock. It's like 22 bucks for a 20 foot stick around here. How about a look at uh, CNN cutting? Yeah, and this is like my third cut, so it's still a bit slow. I don't have the cut rates and feeds uh, set up well yet. Also the zero height is a bit too high at this point. So a big topic for these 
homemade CNC plasma tables is using endpoint, you know, sensors, limit switches. And they have it right. You definitely don't need them. But if you like to make more things more difficult uh, than they need to be, like me, well then uh, I'll tell you what's going on here. I've got homing sensors on the X, Y, and Z. Honestly, you don't need them to make cuts. You just set your zero and go. But I have them so that I can home it, and then it has its references. So after it homes, I have it automatically go to a place on the table that is clear of the cutting surface, so that I can load metal on there without anything in the way. And yeah, you could just jog it out of the way manually, but like I said, I like to make it difficult. Also, I can add code in the cut file that moves everything out of the way also when it's done cutting. Additionally, um, during the G code, it'll let me know if I'm trying to cut something outside of my soft endpoints or off the table or something. So it's kind of nice that way. Also, the Z axis has an additional sensor for finding the material height. So there's actually two sensors on the Z axis. I'm using proximity sensors for all of them. And uh, so far they work perfect. No misfires yet. I've heard of a lot of people having them have problems indicating when they shouldn't be, but I haven't had any of that so far. And you're probably wondering, well, what is that controller made from? Well, it's silicon. Uh, there's some metal in there, some other stuff. Uh, but honestly, I tried a few different um, setups with Android Uno and different items. I ended up going with an ESP32 setup and settled on using the GRBL gerbil, whatever they're pronouncing it, system. The newer version called Fluid NC. It works great. I went with it because I didn't want to have to have a computer connected to it all the time. Or I didn't want to have to run wires or run a separate interface. I can just tie in through Wi-Fi from my computer or from my phone or from a tablet anything really. I can home it, I can load a code, I can start it, I can troubleshoot it, so on. It's really easy. This interface does not have a cute little visual of it cutting, but I found that that's a nicety that I don't really need or care about. And actually this controller system does have a ton of features. I've actually already got mounted in there an additional 0 to 10 volt controller card, which means I can run a VFD and a spindle on this setup if I want to run it as a router. I could also mount a laser on there, control that. It has a lot of options. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is just change the controller settings on the fly. When I built this one, I also built uh, 10 other controllers because they're just plain awesome. But it's probably a few too many for me, so I'll probably sell off some of those. I'll also include a schematic of what I've done so that you can use the same setup if you want. The same uh, post-processor. It's ready to go. Also, I know some have asked for the cut files for the aluminum parts, or even just buying them already cut. I do plan on doing that, but I've been super short on time lately, so sorry about that. At least it's given me time to work out all the bugs and make out revisions. So there it is. If you have any questions, post it in the comments and I'll try and get to them.